Throughout history, every civilization has its secrets, its less explored paths. Today, we dive deep into the often overlooked aspect of one such society, ancient China, unveiling the world of male concubines. In a society largely dominated by Confucian norms, male concubines akin to the Kalokagathos of ancient Greece held an important, albeit less discussed, role. Kalokagathos, an ancient Greek term, signifies an ideal man, combining physical beauty with spiritual and moral perfection. This concept found its parallel in the Chinese male concubines who, beyond their physical attractiveness, held crucial roles in the court and society. Much like the Greek mentors, the Chinese male concubines, known as Nanji, were more than companions. They played significant roles in the intellectual, moral, and sometimes military education of their patrons. From the love and respect between Patroclus and Achilles in Homer's Iliad, we see a parallel in the Chinese courts. The Nanji, much like Hephaestion to Alexander the Great, were often confidants and close friends to emperors, thereby wielding considerable influence. Yet, as with any aspect of society, male concubinage was not without its complexities and controversies. The status of male concubines and their acceptance varied, leading to a nuanced and multi-layered societal dynamic. And what do you think would be the status of male concubines in our time? Would they be outcasts, or would they exist in a protected minority status? Art and literature, as mirrors of society, did not shy away from this subject. From paintings to poetry, the lives, loves, and struggles of male concubines found their way into the cultural landscape. The world of male concubines in ancient China, much like the Kalokagathos of Greece, paints a rich and complex picture of historical societies. It challenges us to look beyond the norms, to explore the less traveled paths of human history. While male concubines served as political and intellectual companions, their position was also significantly tied to their patron's prestige and power. An emperor's number of Nanji was a testament to his wealth and influence, much like a modern tycoon's fleet of luxury cars. The more esteemed and high-ranking the patron, the more likely they were to have a number of male concubines. Aside from personal companionship, Nanji often served as an intricate part of the political machinery. Their proximity to power allowed them to maneuver through the courtly politics, often acting as intermediaries between their patrons and the political rivals. However, the life of a male concubine was not always a bed of roses. Their status was a double-edged sword, bringing them both privilege and danger. While they enjoyed proximity to power and luxury, they were also subject to the whims and fancies of their patrons and could easily fall from grace. Furthermore, the Confucian societal norms had a paradoxical effect on the status of male concubines. While they were accepted as a part of court life, they were also seen as a deviation from the norm, leading to a challenging and often pre Intriguingly, male concubines often found themselves at the heart of power struggles. Emperors, princes, and high-ranking officials would compete for the most desirable companions, and these competitions could at times escalate into full-blown conflicts. Despite these complexities, male concubines left an indelible mark on ancient Chinese society. Their influence can still be seen today in the nuanced depictions of male companionship in Chinese literature and in the ongoing discussions about gender and sexuality. In this exploration of male concubines in ancient China, we have scratched the surface of a complex and fascinating aspect of human history. It serves as a reminder that history is not a monolith, but a mosaic of diverse experiences and stories. Thank you for accompanying us on this historical journey. If this topic intrigued you, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more insights into the rich tapestry of our past. We value your input, so feel free to suggest the next historical era or topic you want us to explore. See you in the next episode.